Welcome to the award-winning Superhuman Academy podcast, where we interview extraordinary people to give you the skills and strategies to overcome the impossible. And now, here's your host, Jonathan Levy. This episode is brought to you by Blue Blocks. Blue and green light is destroying our sleep, hormones, and performance, and that's why it's important to wear blue light blocking glasses. But did you know that all blue light glasses aren't created equal? I personally have started wearing Blue Blocks blue light blocking glasses as they are the only blue light blocking company in the world that create evidence-backed lenses for filtering blue and green light. Their Australian lab-built lens technology is fitted into the most fashionable frames, and they even can make prescription and reading glasses in their optics lab. Whether it's their Sleep Plus glasses that block 100% of blue and green light, their Summer Glow mood booster glasses, or their blue light computer glasses, Blue Blocks has you covered. I wear my Sleep Plus glasses two to three hours before bed, and my sleep has never been better, and I feel so well rested. The daytime ones are also great at reducing digital eye strain, headaches, and lowering stress. With free and fast worldwide shipping using code SUPERHUMAN at checkout, now is an amazing time to level up your sleep and eye health. Just go to blueblocks.com, that's B-L-U, B-L-O-X dot com and enter code SUPERHUMAN to save 15%. Greetings, super friends, and welcome, welcome to this week's episode, which is lovingly crafted thanks to an awesome review from 1244FHJKK in the Russian Federation, who says, inspiring, five stars. They've listened to only one episode so far, but they're already inspired by the episode and would love to share their gratitude for us for doing the podcasts and putting out great content. Thank you so much. Spasiba uh, Bolshoi, I guess I should say, for the wonderful review. On to today's episode. Today, ladies and gents, we are joined by Superwoman. Not literally, but pretty much Superwoman, because today I spoke to Dr. Jamie Hope. She is a dual certified attending physician specializing in emergency medicine at one of the most intense level one trauma tertiary centers in the country. She's also a published author, an online educator, a thought leader, an adjunct assistant professor at Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine, and many, many, many other things, including wife, mother of two, and again, all around superwoman. She tours the world giving keynote lectures on stress, parenting, relationships, business success, healthy habits, and everything else. Jamie is a friend from Genius Network, and the last time I spoke to her and picked her brain about health because she is one of the physicians whose opinion I trust more than absolutely anybody else in the world, and I'm not the only one, I said we have to have you on the show to share your opinions on health and specifically around stress. Jamie knows more as a trauma tertiary center physician than just about anyone in the world I can think of around stress and stress management. So in this episode, we talked not only about stress, but we do go deep into how to use stress as a tool, how to manage stress, and all her various ways for not only managing her attention and managing her time, though neither of us actually believe in time management as a construct, but we go really, really deep into how she accomplishes so much and how she maintains peak health with all the things going on in her life. I really, really enjoyed this conversation, which is a good indication that you all are going to enjoy it. So please enjoy this episode with my friend, Dr. Jamie Hope. Dr. Jamie Hope, how are you, my friend? Oh, Jonathan, I am so good. I'm so glad to be here with you today. Likewise, and I'm really stoked. This is going to come off sounding very wrong, but I'm very excited to spend a whole weekend with you after this at uh, Genius yeah. Network. I know. That's going to be so awesome. We get to hang out in real life yes. um, and can't really dive into more conversations and fun. And of course, I mean, Genius Network, that's how we met. Yes. Joe Polish is one of our, you know, one of my favorite people, one of your favorite people. He's a great guy. So I'm really excited about that. We had a solid mind and soul meld when we met and Brandon <laughs> told me that we would. So I'm really yeah. excited because I'm just trying to piece together in my head, like all the things that you do. <laughs> and I know we share so many topics of interest around yes. health. 
Yes. I mean, we could nerd out for hours about, about this kind of stuff and our, our passions and the way we're both very dedicated to purpose and helping people. So we'll actually try and cut it down for today. Right. Today will be the short version for the listeners yes. at home. Yes. What do you say when, when people ask, uh, what do you do? Like, how do you fit it all in? You know, it's honestly, it's getting to be a harder question to answer. I mean, the easy answer is I'm a doctor. I'm an mm -hmm. ER, I specialize in emergency medicine. I work at one of the busiest level one trauma centers in the United States. So kind of this high stress, high stakes environment. And it was actually that that led me to all of these other things that I'm doing. So I'm an assistant right. professor. I do teaching. I'm an educator. I'm a speaker. I'm a event facilitator, coach, you know, like 50 different things. So it's hard. it depends on if that's, they're asking the polite quick question, like kind of how are you? Or yeah. if they're actually asking me what I do. Right. Uh, I want to get into how, how you fit it all in because I teach many courses on productivity and I still don't understand how you fit it all in. So I, I want to carve out time later in the interview for yes. that. But first I want to ask, you are quite easily one of the most passionate people I have met about health. Yes. Why? What, what happened in your life that, that made you say, I'm going to dedicate 26 hours a day to helping people be healthier? So many things. My, uh, how it all got started was, a so let's go in the way back machine to the 1990s. And I'm jumping on one of those big trampolines with my BFF. And this is well before safety regulations. I mean, there's <laughs> bear, bear springs, there's no padding. I mean, you might as well have sprinkled some broken glass around the outside of this trampoline. Right. <laughs> so we're jumping on this with a kid who's much bigger than us, because that's more fun and they can bounce you higher, right? Of course. And so, he, of course. So, you know, physics, gravity still works though. So, when he bounced her really high and she flew off the trampoline, landed on the ground, and her elbow was obviously dislocated. And I, I was, I think I was about 10, and you're supposed to freak out when something like that happens. But I very distinctly remember focusing in on nothing else except her elbow, thinking, like, if we turn it this way, I think I could fix that. Oh my gosh. I'm like, okay, that's probably not normal. Um, so, but of course she was very wise and she's like, no weirdo, go get my mom, like a normal kid. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and I just, I was so fascinated by that and how the body works. And so I spent a lot of time nerding out and educating myself. And then in my work in the emergency department, I constantly, every day, see people on the worst day of their life. Like for me, it's a normal Tuesday morning. For them, it's the worst day of their life. And I keep looking at upstream all the things that led them to get there, sitting in my ER in a one-size-fits-nobody gown with their butt hanging out. Right. And I'm so passionate about helping people prevent from ending up in my ER in the first place. And so I, that's my, my primary job is that. And the whole rest of my secondary, what I do is keeping people from ending up there. Incredible. Incredible. So you speak on a lot of different topics. I, I want the audience just to get a get a sense before we get into the productivity stuff. I want them to get a sense of just how many pots you have in the fire. Like w you talk about productivity, you talk about health, you talk about disease prevention. Uh, yes. You you are a professor, associate professor. Um, what are the topics right now that you're that you're juggling in the health realm? So all that, you, just general health-related topics. So when I'm at a, a medicine conference, I might be teaching things about uh, postpartum emergencies or heart attacks or stroke, you know, the medical type stuff. But what I've also found is there's more to medicine than medicine. Right. So even at those conferences, I'm being asked to talk about things like stress and resilience. And that's kind of a big one I want to hit today because that's a right. very passion area. I talk about confidence and imposter syndrome and the pillars of health. Because yes, I'm a very traditionally trained allopathic doctor. I'm an MD. I went to the traditional school. And I remember sitting there in classes thinking, okay, we're learning about how the body works. And then the next section is here's the pill for that. And I'm like, um, wait, aren't, 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 aren't we missing the part where we teach people that they also need to eat vegetables and get sleep and manage their stress yeah. and be connected with other humans? And I felt like that component was missing. So, so yeah, yeah. So, so all of that plus... I also do a lot of work and advocacy for human trafficking. So right, right. Yes. Talk to me about stress because this, you know, I, uh, you know, and I've I've talked with you and you've mentored me on this anxiety, stress, yes. neurochemical. Where do we stand? I mean, we all we all. I just recently heard a statistic that something like seventy percent of people will suffer from anxiety at some point in their life. 
I can, and I can't even believe that statistic because it's got to be like 99%. I, who, right. Who's that? So I always ask my patients when they're in the emergency department about more than just their ankle sprain or their, their belly pain because what is going on in your life? And Jonathan, pretty much universally, every person tells me I've been under more stress lately. Yeah, of course. It's put some kind of recording as if they gave that on a card on the way in and be like, don't forget to say this to your doctor. This is everybody. And there's so many thoughts and techniques about stress. And so I've come to the conclusion that a lot of what we learn about stress is actually bullshit. Okay, tell me more. So I have a really different philosophy about it. So I want, so stress, so number one, a couple different things, how you can actually use it. So the first key I want people to wrap their mind around is that stress is a tool. Wow. Okay, so imagine you have a hobby saw in your garage. Well, you know, really sharp blades can make anything. If you take the time to read the manual, learn from the experts, watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts about how to use your hobby saw effectively, you mm. can use this to create some of the most beautiful things. But if you have no idea what you're doing and you decide you're just gonna crank that baby up and start making something with no help, I mean, you're going to cut off some fingers. Right. <laughs> you're gonna make if you're lucky. If yeah, you're lucky. Yeah, that's going to be the best case scenario. So if you start to look stress as a tool, it's not the tool itself that breaks you down. It's how you wield it. I like that a lot because someone once explained to me, without stress, talking about on a, on a biochemical level, without stress, you will die. Your body actually yes. needs the hormones of stress. It's it's what you know gets you out of bed in the morning, and and but it's it's how much, to what extent, at what time. It's the same thing with like anyone can be angry, but you know the yeah. how much with the right person at the right time to the right extent. That's the magic. Yes. So starting to use it. I mean, the bicep needs the stress of a weight to grow, right? And we need the stress of education and experience and making some mistakes in order to learn how to become an expert. So this, the stress isn't the bad thing. The bullshit part is that we're just using the tool incorrectly. Mm. How do we use stress correctly? So I love what we'll get to eventually. Everybody talks about all these stress relieving techniques and how you should relax and stuff like that, which is great. And I'm 100% on board with that. I know that stress is killing my patient, but you can't get from the high stress to petting a fuzzy bunny. Mm and just chilling, they're missing the part in between. And that's what drives me nuts when people talk about stress. So that's where I want to be at. Everybody can, there, you can find podcasts anywhere and listen to meditation techniques and petting a fuzzy bunny and relaxing. I want to talk about that middle ground before mm -hmm. you can get there and then do those extremely useful techniques. Yeah. So, okay, you're very familiar with the sympathetic response, right? The fight or flight. You know that one. Yep. So, you know, your heart rate goes up, you release your stress hormones, all these different things. But I want to reframe that. So here's what happens during the sympathetic response. Your heart rate goes up, fueling your muscles, so you can do increased performance type things, like right. lift a car off somebody who's dying. Your pupils dilate, so you can take in more light, so your vision improves. Mm -hmm. You become mm -hmm. hyper-focused on what's in front of you, because it's, imagine you're running from a bear, the last thing you care about is, hey, that paper doesn't match this room right okay. if you reframe that and realize that in the stress state all of a sudden you have improved focus better vision and increased muscle strength yeah is it just me or does that kind of sound like superpowers right it, it you know it's true like you actually cannot get into the flow state unless there is some uh i think it's called like performance anxiety you actually yes. cannot get into the flow state on something that is easy and like, you know, nothing for you, which is crazy. Yes. And so we watch all these superhero movies and we're like, wow, I wish I could do that. Y yep, you can. Your, your body literally gives this gift to you. And so when I'm working in the emergency department and people are crashing, you know, we're cracking open someone's chest, we're resuscitating multiple people at a time from a, a bus accident, these type of things, of course my stress level is high. But I've learned to use that, like a lot of people who work in these high stress, high stakes fields, bomb diffusers, hostage negotiators and stuff, yeah. we use that superpower to get into absolute flow. I'm at my calmest when crap is going wrong in the ER. Because yeah. you're very focused on, we need to do this, this, and this to get stuff done. Yeah. Now, not everybody's job is as bloody and messy as mine. But you 
you can st- <laughs> thank goodness, right? Right. But you can still use that. I've gotten some of my best writing done when I'm in that state. And so whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is that's stressing you out. The key is when you get that superhero surge, stop wasting it and use it to your advantage. Take that time, whatever else you were supposed to be doing and say, what can I do with this awesome superpower? Sometimes it is, you know, right, get into this amazing flow state. You can get stuff done. You look at your to-do list with that level of strength and you're Mm -hmm. like, boom, 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 boom. Sometimes you need to do something a little more physical. Like all of a sudden you decide you're gonna just rearrange your entire garage. Right. And, and so to use that power, so I call, that's the power up phase of this, of this thing. So it's a power up and power down. So you're already being given this gift. Life handed you the stress already. You, mm-hmm. you may or may not have had a choice about that. Your body handed you the solution to that stress. So use that power up, get into the flow and accomplish whatever you can with your superpowers. I love that. Is this one of those, because I've, I've always been told like stress is a really good thing in bursts, but then it's when it's every day, all day sustained, that's when you break. Yes, that's when it starts to kill you because your body is meant to have the, this up and down surges and right. it's the long-term chronic cortisol stress that really starts to build up plaque on people's arteries, damage their vessels, damage yep. their nerves, lead to all these disease states, which we already know. That part is true, but that doesn't mean all stress is bad. Right. So that's the power up phase. You got to use that power instead of waste it. And so I do that even if I'm stressed about something else, all of a sudden I'm getting tons of stuff accomplished, which is great. Like the stress of a vacation, you're about to leave tomorrow to get out or tonight. Uh, yeah. to get out. You're getting yeah. more stuff done now than you've done. All week. God, yes. But then the key, like you said, Jonathan, is you do have to, you have to dissipate that because you can't live oh. there. No. So that's, so that's what we did power up. Then you talk about the power down phase. So when you're ramped up, okay, you've gotten your stuff done, you still have to dissipate those stress hormones. They don't just magically vaporize. Right. Your body was meant to use those. And so before we get to the, you know, the fuzzy bunny type of stuff, if I'm really ramped up about something, I can't go from there to there that quickly. You know, I see some horrible, you know, abuse situation of a victim of human trafficking and I come home and I am not relaxed. Right. Th- that's not relaxing. And so to honor your body's natural instincts. So we're meant to have this primal stress up response. And I teach people and actually give them permission. It's okay to power down in the same primal way. Cool. So there I call you can stress hard or stress soft. So stress soft is the quiet music, the meditation, the fuzzy bunny, hugging a pillow, whatever. Right. But sometimes we need to stress hard to get those things off. And so one of the first things I ever did is something called dish therapy. <laughs> yeah, just aggressive. <laughs> yeah. So I literally got a, a set of just super cheap thrift store dishes and you smash them to bits. Wow. I know it sounds crazy, but honestly, it is one of the most satisfying things ever. And by the time you're done, you're like, oh. and And so there's other ways that you can do this that are a little less messy. Right. Um, You can do pillow and racket, any racket, like picture a tennis racket, put it above your head and whack down on a pillow. Again, these are, we're trying to do safe things. We're not hurting other people. Right. And for some people it's punching a punching bag, lacing up their shoes and going for a long run, going for a challenging hike. It's, but you gotta let that out. And to clarify, this isn't actually about the, like the violence of it. It's about the physiological response that your body gets when you perform intense activity to wind down those hormones. Yes, it's actually a like a beautiful primal natural thing. So no violence in, necessary, but yes, yeah, sometimes we need the very strong physicality for that, mm. and that's that's perfectly okay. I actually only have a couple rules about that. As your friendly local emergency doctor, right. if you are going to break things, uh, number one, don't break something that does not belong to you. Yes. Uh, number two, please don't break something that's irreplaceable. And number three, if you are going to do that, please wear safety glasses. Because right. having a piece of thrift store dishes in your eyeball is going to do nothing to decrease your stress. Right. Or just get a punching bag, something that's meant to be beaten. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's, I mean, so there's just so many super easy ways that you can do this. And it's okay. It's mostly just giving people permission. It's okay to get to that missing step before right. you relax. And after I do something like that, then you want the, then I want the soft things. I want the, I want the pleasant smell. I want a warm bath. I want candles. I, 
pet yeah. my dogs, you know, play with my kids, hug my family. But yeah, sometimes we need to just release that and think about what that could do for your anxiety states. Right. To be release some of what you're struggling with instead of holding it inside. It's the holding it in. It's how you're wielding that tool that breaks you down. That's interesting. So I, I imagine the piece that you're not telling us because you're the expert in, and people don't need to know this, but I geek out on it, is like <laughs> really what you're trying to do is dissipate the cortisol in the body and get dopamine flowing again. Exactly. You're literally in because that cord, the cortisol and also just the adrenaline, the noradrenaline, that, you right. know, the epinephrine, norepinephrine, you have to dissipate those out in a more primal historic way. OK, you're running from a bear. You actually are dissipating it at that time. Right. But in modern life, we don't always take that time. And that's why I mean, I, I think exercise is great. You and I could talk about all the benefits of exercise on every level of the body, inflammatory hormones, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But for mm -hmm. me, I'm co-using my exercise as also my stress release. Right, right. So, Which is why I used to like to work out in the evening and then I, I just discovered like all the, the, the biological response benefits of working out in the morning and it was like, ah, you know, <laughs> can I really like leave all these things on the table? Because it, you, you know, know, and there's something to be said for both. I, I mean, any exercise is good exercise. Right. And sometimes at the end of the, if you find at the end of the day you're ramped up with all these stress hormones, you're you're leaving on the table the biologic benefit of dissipating those before sleep. Right. So there, right. there there's benefits either way. It has to be whatever whatever suits you. And I look at health as a very dynamic thing. It's not necessarily every minute to minute or day to day, but it's the that bigger picture. Mm. So people who, who, you know, you talked about this middle step is the long-term goal to get to a point where we can kind of, you know, whim hoff it or like just get to a state where we actually have control over our stress levels and we can just dissipate our stress by sitting down and medic meditating or, or is that not realistic? It depends on the person. I have a hard time with the sitting still form of meditation, mm -hmm. but for me, mm -hmm. if I'm hiking a challenging hike, you have to be so present. You have to be looking at every tree, every root, every rock. You know, I don't turn on a podcast, don't do anything else. Right. And be very focused. So the meditation, it doesn't always have to be that sitting still form. And maybe for some people, that's not even necessarily their goal to get to that. But right. as you start to, you know, I'm a huge believer in habits. I've studied human habits and behavior change for 14 years and have done all this. So the habit is however you learn how to manage and dissipate your stress, whether it's through meditation or whether it's through physicality or any other method, the key right. is as you notice you ramp up and use it, then the next habit is power down. Right, right. And I that really like that. Benefit. However you power down, as long as you're doing it, you're gonna get all the health benefits and not have stress breaking down your body. I love that. So I'm gonna take uh, advantage of the very special opportunity to talk to you because you quite literally, I mean, I've picked your brain on, on numerous <laughs> occasions and, and you know more about human health than I think anyone I've ever met. And oh, I, I've you. met a lot of people. You um, have, I, that's a huge honor, thank you. So let's take the, you know, the, the last 250 episodes, sleep well, <laughs> don't eat garbage, exercise, let's leave all that out. What are the things that you're seeing that people are not doing to achieve superhuman health besides the obvious ones? I, you know, I honestly, we're doing so many things. We are trying to, we're taking medications. Okay, you have a stomach upset, let's decrease your acid. You know, you can't sleep, let's take a sleeping pill. We're trying, what we're doing is we're treating the symptom and not the problem. And so I, I really think that we aren't stepping back and taking a look at somebody as a whole human being. Yeah. And we're trying to focus in on the tiny minutia and detail instead of stepping back and looking at the big picture. Yep. But honestly, the secret is people come to me and they're like, okay, you, what's the magic diet? Tell me, tell me the one diet, tell me the so, one exercise yeah. thing, tell me the one thing. And it's so funny because again, they're starting in the middle and not at the beginning where they should be. So it comes one back thing to stress, right? It's like yes. stress and inflammation is the cause of just about every ailment you can think of. And yes. what causes inflammation better than stress? <laughs> right. It's amazing. And so what people are forgetting when they're trying to, you know, I want to get rid of junk food. I want to do all this stuff is they're forgetting the most important organ in the body, which is your brain. Mm -hmm. Think of how many junk thoughts we have. So when people are trying to make a habit change, whether they want to improve their business, be more productive, 
sleep better, exercise more, eat better, all those things, it comes back to the same thing. And the magic secret is how you view yourself is how you will act. Yep. So before we jump, you know, to the, you know, the magic diet and all those type of things, I really invite people to take an inventory of what, how they are referring to themselves. What are they calling themselves? Take a look at your ants, your automatic negative thoughts. So first thing you see when you look in the mirror, is it your compassionate smile or are you focused on your hair frizz? Right. When somebody gives you a compliment, is your first thing to think, oh my gosh, if they knew the real me, they would never say that, of course. And so all those different things. And as our dear friend Joe Polish says, one of my favorite phrases by him is, sometimes we need to give ourselves a mental enema mm. to clear all the bullshit out of our brains. I love that. Because if you view yourself as lazy or a procrastinator and you make all these business goals, what's going to happen is you're going to miss one or two and then you're going to, that's going to confirm, oh, of course I'm lazy. I'm a procrastinator. I'm hopeless. I never listen. Same thing with health. If you view yourself as a fat person or a diet failure or hopeless or a carb addict or any of these other ridiculous labels, you're going to act consistently with that label. Yeah, I, uh, I teach this in one of my courses. I call it the memory Pygmalion effect because if you believe you have a bad memory, you will have a bad memory. It's so simple. And you actually might have been the person who told me this, so stop me if you were, but someone recently told me about a study, and I haven't checked this yet, talking about mind over matter and the power of your brain and how it is your most important organ. They had uh, two different groups of people, or, mm -hmm. or they had a group of people they did a control where they drank, you know, the classic 50 grams of glucose, tested uh -huh. their blood sugar. Did you tell me this? No, but we there's a similar study also that I love. So I, we okay. may have, we chatted for so long, we may have Right. About I think someone told both of us this. So 50 grams yeah. of glucose, measure their blood sugar, come back the next day, 50 grams of glucose, tell them that there's no sugar in it or whatever. And their blood glucose response, their glycemic response was actually lower. Same food. Yeah, same concept. The, have you heard the housekeeper study? No. So hot, hotel housekeepers. It's a busy job. I mean, they're cleaning up a bunch of stuff. So the control group, they just said, you know, go about your job. And the study group, they said, did you know that the activity that you do at your job actually meets the definition for an active lifestyle? You're actually hitting the boxes you need in terms of health. And so they followed them and they made sure, you know, was this group starting to exercise more, doing anything different? And they didn't. And that group lost weight. Because they believed they were doing something to lose weight. Whoa. Yes. And so people want, oh, I can't change my self-label. It, it's as simple as this. Did your brain believe the first one? Yep. Will it believe then the new, new improved one? Absolutely. Your wow. brain believes what you tell it. You're in charge. Like, use this example, okay? Say you're running. If you tell your brain, I'm running from a bear and I'm about to die, it's going to oblige with giving you the sympathetic response the cortisol, all of those stressors. Right. Now say you're, say you're running for your best friend in a race to raise money for a charity that you believe in more than anything. And you tell your brain that. It's gonna give you the sympathetic hormones you need in order to do the right. physical activity. But it's gonna flood you with oxytocin and serotonin and all those beautiful, same event, mm. you're running. Either way, it's how you tell your brain to interpret that that makes That's all fascinating. the difference. That's super fascinating. <laughs> And, and it comes back to this whole stress thing, right? Like when you reframe your stress as a tool, it's no longer this terrible, scary thing. It's kind of like people always ask me how I eat such spicy food. And I'm like, at some point, it, the, my mindset shifted and I realized that capsaicin can't actually harm my body. So I just enjoy the experience of burning flesh. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the same experience, but now it's like, wow, this is a really intense experience as opposed to, oh my God, am I doing damage to my taste buds? You know, yeah. and we do. I mean, you and I both love speaking. I mean, we do. We do keynotes. We do events. We. It, it, I don't know about you, but I. Well, I've seen you speak, so I know that you get pumped <laughs> up during it. You're, I, I love do. your theology changes. You're in this flow state. You're. I mean, you're smiling. You're having a great time. Now you know a lot of people. They fear public speaking worse than death. Yep. And so, but when you first start, you get up on stage and you tell yourself, "I'm going to die," and you freak out. And same thing, you're going to get all the bad hormones. But you get right. up there and say, "I am going to be doing something useful. I'm connected to purpose." And you get all the good stuff. And it's it makes awesome such a and difference. Fun. 
it makes such a difference. And that's exactly what I do. I use, I like to journal before I go on stage and I write out like the impact that I want to make on people's lives. Yes. And then it's like, I, I feel like I'm doing charity work. You know what I mean? I'm connecting <laughs> deeply to people and I'm getting that oxytocin. And that was a big shift because before, and you see it in my Ted talk, when you watch me, that was, I'm here to perform. And then it's performance anxiety as opposed to I'm here to give. It's that Different. shift that makes all the difference. So I talk about how people can use their pain for purpose. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to tell you a really brief story about a patient. Uh, this is a guy named Pete. So he had actually kind of a not terribly extraordinary life, not no, no major stressors. He was living with his aunt and uncle. And then one day, all of a sudden, his uncle was horrifically murdered right in front of him. Oh, my like, God. Can you imagine? I know. Can you imagine that kind of stress? Terrible. But it turns out a, a short time before that, he was bitten by a radioactive spider. <laughs> and it turns out that right. he had the ability, he had agility, strength, and was able to shoot webs from his hands <laughs> all of a sudden so that when Peter Parker turned into the amazing Spider-Man and witnessed that tragedy. Now, what pe people say that it was the radioactive spider bite that turned him into the amazing Spider-Man and gave him his abilities. But I argue that that's not accurate. What the spider gave him were the innate abilities, the, the coordination, the strength, the web slinging, but it was the pain that gave him purpose. Because mm. otherwise, he could have just used those spider webs to create crafts and sell them on Etsy. Right. I mean, he could have he done True. Cirque du Spidey in Vegas. He could have done right. anything with those innate abilities. But he took a pain that he had and connected it to purpose. Yep. And that's how you live a life that is using your stress. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's you know, it's man's search for meaning. Victor Frankl, it's exactly that idea. It's yes, like, do, I mean, does your pain have a real purpose to it, or is it just pain? Yeah, and so some people like our mutual friend Joe Polish, the founder of Genius Network, he grew up in an abusive, very disconnected home where he was lonely, right. and he grew up to be known as the most connected man in business. Right. And uh, Jeff was at an airport one day waiting to check in, made it in plenty of time for his flight, got stuck there because this was the, the old archaic system. And by the time he got through that line, he missed his flight. And it was a really important thing. So what he did was connect that irritation to his innate abilities, his spider bite, which were tech, innovation, business development, and that. And so he created that check-in kiosk that are now at airports all over the world. Wow. And that's. Jeff Hoffman, the billionaire founder of Priceline, he took that pain, connected cool. it to a purpose, and, and created something amazing. All right, at this point, I want to pause and take a moment to thank our sponsor, Four Sigmatic, who is making it easy for everyday people to unlock the incredible health benefits of mushrooms. I originally learned about Four Sigmatic when I met their founder at a conference in 2015, and I have been pretty much obsessed with their products ever since. Personally, I use their reishi mushroom tea most nights for an all-natural sleep aid. I carry their chaga immunity blend anytime I travel, and I've also pretty much switched out my usual coffee or yerba mate for their unbelievably awesome mushroom coffee, either in ground or in instant form. Now, what I love about the mushroom coffee is that it combines chaga for immune support with lion's mane for intense focus. And because of that, I actually find it to be more effective than most nootropics or stimulants, including Ritalin, despite having only 40 milligrams of caffeine. It's honestly insane. If you haven't tried out their products, I strongly, strongly recommend you do so. And to encourage you to give them a try, we've actually teamed up with Four Sigmatic to bring you an incredible 15% discount. To take advantage of that, just visit foursigmatic.com slash superhuman today. All right, back to the show. So cool, so cool. Now talking about business, I... I don't believe in time management. I think time management is bullshit. And I imagine it's you, you probably, bullshit. it's not a real <laughs> thing, but how do you manage your attention and, and how do you, you know, how, how, what's a day in the life of Dr. Jamie Hope and, and, and what is your philosophy around fitting so much into your life? Because I know you also have a family. You also have friends. Yes. You, you, you yeah. have many of the same friends that I have, and you're known as, as a very giving and caring. And you always seem to have time when I text you a question. So how do you do it? So I have found, well, one, you, multitasking is bullshit. You're just doing totally. several things badly. Totally. So I tend to kind I tend to go all in on something. Like today, it, you know, my kids have a half day. When we're done with this, I'm going to go pick them up. I have my phone near me, 
but I'm not on it. I'm not checking my email. I'm not doing a million other things because here's a secret. The world's not going to burst into flames right. if I don't answer that email in the next five minutes. And so when I'm with my kids, I'm focused on my kids. When I'm right. with my friends, I'm focused on that. When I'm available to answer a text, I'm focused on that because somebody's asking me an important question. And right. if I'm trying to do 50 other things, it doesn't work. And so day to day, my life might not look balanced. Like the rest of today is going to be almost exclusively focused on my kids. Right. Okay. Then t tomorrow I'm getting on a plane to Genius Network and it's going to be, while I'm there, it's going to be between the talks, I'm going to be connecting spending right. time with amazing right. humans like you and I'm going to be focused on that and during the talks I'm focusing on my personal development of my business learning and how can I grow right so, so I've actually become a master unitasker right which I think is key and then looking at the you know they say you can tell what you value if you look at your checkbook in your calendar yeah so I look at the at my month and say okay this these two weeks are actually kind of very heavy travel focused for me I think I'm giving 12 different talks in the course of two weeks. Wow. It's, it's a lot. But that's the way, you know, a lot of these are just annual events that only come around once a year. And so I, I choose to say yes to the opportunities that resonate with me. I've had to learn to say no, like, thank you. I, I'm so flattered that you would ask. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I can't fit that in my schedule now. Here's somebody else I can recommend. Sure. That type of thing. And so, okay, so the first two weeks, I'm going to be focused a lot on travel, biz dev, personal development, and connecting. And then then near the end of the month, I have a lot more time. And so where can I find those pockets of time, make sure I'm exercising, friends and family. So I kind of look at my life at about a month at a time instead of a day at a time. And that's how I find balance. Wow. And I actually can fit more in because the, the things that I say no to. Right. It, it seems This seems to be a common thing and this is why I, I changed the way that we teach our productivity course and, yes. and a big focus is attention management is yep. my attention is just on this. And I'm, you know, I'm guilty. Like this morning I answered emails on the exercise bike. I believe there is a good form of multitasking and a bad form. And the good form is like, yeah. you know, like you're saying, like with your kids, don't just put a movie in front of them, like go to a museum to spend time with them. It's high quality yes. activity, but there does seem to be first off this, this huge benefit to unitasking, as you said, but yes. everyone you meet who's a high performer, except Joe Polish, because he managed to he manages to just connect to everyone all the time in some way. <laughs> yeah. But everyone else, it's yeah. like, I am unavailable. <laughs> right. I am unavailable at this time. I'm, I'm writing. And I mean, I, we do a lot of outreach for this podcast, right, to get people on the show. Yes. And I can't tell you how many times people are like, yeah, I can't do that. I'm writing my next book for the next six months. I'm not I'm not talking to human beings for the next six months <laughs> because I'm writing my next book. It's like respect, yes. you know. Oh yeah. To, and to me, that's a, I mean, which is great for some people. I don't want to, I want a little bit more balance. Well, I took me for writing my book. It took me two years, but what happened was the first year and a half of that, I was kind of doing it piecemeal here, there, whatever, worried about what everybody else thought about it, blah, blah, blah. And then when mm -hmm. I finally realized I've spent 14 years of my life helping people make positive behavior changes, I connected it to purpose, boom, get down, write it immediately. Right. So okay. And so, you know, having that level of focus matters. But what the other trick I have found is I've also learned to integrate stuff. I used to think everything had to be a separate silo. Now, you did emails while you were exercising. If you because you're exercising, your body is still getting the physical benefit and your mind is concentrating right. on the email as long as you don't you know fall off and break your arm. Right. That's fine. I used to wait until my kids were napping to exercise. But also during that time, I need to get a lot of other stuff done. Right. Why not exercise with my children? What a crazy idea. So we crank up the music, do dance parties, jump up and down. Brilliant. Listen, if you want some exercise, I will send my children to your house. I promise they will, wear <laughs> they will wear you out. It's great. And so now it's kind of fun. How can I integrate stuff in? I love connecting with people, like you said. You know, does somebody want to go on a hike with me? Right. So we can kind of do both of those things. But not, but again, not multitasking. It's what can I integrate so that they're both getting the useful attention that they deserve and giving me the benefits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you manage your own calendar? I do. I, st I still do, which I know is crazy. But I also know, I, you know, I've talked about having an assistant, but I also know where I can and am willing to plug stuff in. Right. But what I have learned, you know, I teach this thing and I, I know we probably don't have time, but I teach people how to quote, empty their stress. It's an acronym, E-M-P-T-Y. And so it, it started with one day I was, you know, I wanted to play with my kids, 
But so we have two rescue dogs, big dogs. Okay. And and I live in Michigan, so people probably know that's a fairly cold place. Right. So all winter, okay. of course, the dogs are going to the bathroom outside and then it, the snow melts and there it is. And so I'm, you know, I'm cleaning up poop in the yard. And it's not that I, I can't do that. It's not that I have anything against it. I'm not afraid of, obviously, I, I deal in blood and guts and poop all day at work. So I'm not bashful right. about that. Right. But I had so many other things to be doing. So now I pay this young girl like 12 bucks, takes her about a half hour. So she's making good money, cash, right. for, for what she does. She cleans up the poop. And I'm looking at like, what other crap in my life should I be offloading to somebody else? Half versus elf, as Joe says. Yes. So I don't have an assistant, but I am now expert at, you know, what can I automate? What can I eliminate all yeah. of those things out of my life? Because I'm not going to outsource my parenting. Right. I'm not going to outsource my relationships. You can't like pay someone else to kiss someone for you. That'd right. be weird. <laughs> so, um, and so that way I can really, so I emptied out a lot of things out of my life and I'll often look at what do I not, what should I not be doing with my time right now? Totally, totally. Yeah, I, so I'm guilty. I only recently reluctantly admitted that I needed an assistant because I, I thought I was more efficient than that. But I also, <laughs> I heavily use automation. Like I haven't yes. scheduled a call myself. Like I use automation and tools and I built in all the rules and it's like, this is when I can have dinner, just pick a time, you know? Um, so I do a lot of that and I teach it in our Speed Demon course and you know, it, it is one of these, like, at what level am I operating at? My next thing is I, and this is like a project because I'm not the only person in my household, obviously, but I want to delegate all forms of domestic stuff because my right. wife is also a career woman. And it's mm -hmm. like, neither of us enjoy cooking anymore. We used to when we were young and, you know, learning new recipes. We don't enjoy that. We don't enjoy doing laundry. We, and I'm, I'm like, it would not cost a lot of money to completely delegate this out. There's social stigma around it of course, but, uh, it would not cost a lot of money to do it. So, so we're, we're trying to get to that point as well. Um, tell me a bit about your, because you are in this high stress environment, you are very busy <laughs> to say the absolute <laughs> least. Yes. What is your kind of, how do you, how do you create energy? How do you have all the attention and focus? How are you building up all this tremendous amount of energy and in other words, how are you performing at a superhuman level? Like what is your, what's your routine? So what, what I found I had to do, cause there was a point in my schedule and in my life where I was just completely broken down. Right. I was burnt out. I was exhausted. I was not doing anything with the level of passion and energy that I brought. And mm -hmm. it's because, you know, so imagine you're a bucket and there's all these holes in the bottom of all these things that you have to do for other people and everything else. And so I'm constantly trying to pour water into this bucket and it's just leaking out the bottom. And so what I kind of reframe that and, t you know, imagine more instead of holes in the bottom, imagine it's like a fountain where the bucket is tipped. So water comes in and water flows out. Right. But there's always some in there for me to use. So I had to become very deliberate about managing myself. I am the machine that's trying to do all these things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as Joe says, you can't fix the world with broken hands. You can't carry the weight of the world with a broken back. And so when I started really focusing on my four pillars of health, I have found it, that self-care isn't selfish. I am a better doctor if I have a full stomach and an empty bladder and a good night's rest. Yeah, totally. I, I'm a better mom if I've dissipated my stress and I'm not snapping at my kids for losing their shoes for the 500th time. Right. You know, I'm a better a partner, better everything when I'm taking care of myself. And again, you don't have to be in a dark room alone doing these things. I eat healthy meals with my family. Right. I exercise with them, but I'm making sure that I get those things done because I feel better as a person and I can perform better. So I don't know when people got this idea that self-care is so selfish and you're, you know, there's, there is a stigma. I'm like, hey, am I, you know, I going to have my kids hang out and play with a babysitter and go to the park and I'm going to go get a massage and go for a run. And people are like, oh. I'm like, yeah, okay, my kids are having an amazing time. Right. I'm relaxed and when I come home, I am, you know, super awesome, energetic, fun mommy. Right. And, and, and that kind of stuff matters. So I, it took years to get to that level because I'm teaching it to my patients and I finally am like, I should probably be doing some of those things too. Yep. So I, I literally use what I teach all the time, every day. It's right. part of my lifestyle now. Right. I love that. And Benjamin Hardy brought this yes. up 
of him. You know, yeah, he's a, a mutual friend of both of ours, and and I know we both love his work. In fact, I think I see his book on the bottom right of the screen. Actually, yep, there. Yes, yep. that is the book. Um, <laughs> He talked about it, he did a challenge for our mastermind, and he talked about you know everyone's talking about high performance habits and how to get to that high performance. No one's talking about like ultra high quality recovery, right? Because if you go the high highs, then you yes. got to go the low lows in terms of like, you know, are you doing the okay cool? Just as an example, right? You're working out six days a week. Are you getting a massage once a week to actually repair your muscles and 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 yes. fix your fascia? And and he talks about you know like. Sitting in front of the TV watching Netflix is not like high quality recovery, Ew. you know. Um, whereas, like, like sitting in a bubble bath in the dark, quiet, meditating, that's super high quality recovery. And taking a week off from work is higher quality recovery, you know. It's just like the concept power up, power down with stress. It's the same right. thing performance up and let it down. It's both of those steps matter. None of us have the just the bubble bath life. We can't live in the bubble bath, right? Right but not just the stress, it's finding, I, I don't even necessarily let, you know, people say balance, I prefer more of an integrative approach, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, you have to have all of those components. Right. And it, it's also okay to, you know, people think, oh, do you, because I am very energetic, I really don't use any stimulants. People laugh really? and say how much, people, how much coffee do you drink? I'm like, oh my gosh, could you imagine me caffeinated? This is my baseline. <laughs> wow, you are a classic fire sign, like full on <laughs> fire sign, yeah. It's, and so, but I, because I got a great night's sleep last night, right. because I, you know, I actually exercised this morning before this to, you know, drop the kids off at school, go, for, go exercise. Then I was hyper-focused. I was able to get stuff done until we started right. and, you know, just have, have that approach. So yeah, it's perfectly okay to do that. And, and then right. I do have bad days. There are times when I feel bad. I feel like crap, bad things about myself, but I've already learned the habits and skills how to get out of that. So I, I acknowledge it's part of my existence. I feel those feelings too, self-doubt, stress, all those things. But I have the tools to manage it. And that's what makes those lows a shorter period of time and feeling so good when I can get out of it because then I can help someone else. Love that. Now, at, I have often said that there should be an app called Ask Dr. Hope. Uh, <laughs> and I think this should be an app because everyone at Genius Network comes up to you with you know a bottle of the latest whatever magnesium oh. oil or you know the, the latest thing and goes what do you think about this and you always have very very good insight so i want to ask you know i see you're wearing an apple watch i'm wearing my blue blockers like what are the products and services that you use with your family that are like part of your optimal health kit and rattle them off as much because uh i use a ton I'm, I'm a big fan of like essential oils and stimulants and all kinds of you know everything's but tell me all of yours so um, uh, my Apple Watch, I love it. I mean, I just give my money to the evil Apple overlords. Yep. Just shut up and take my money. I need my right. phone. I need my watch. Because again, it, it can break you down. You can spend all your time on your phone doing stupid stuff. Or it's a tool, and you can right. use how to wield it. So some of the best tools I use on there are apps that are, you know, there's a, there's a Breathe app for kids that helps them when they're super ramped up in stress. Now, first, I'll have them do jumping jacks and a bunch of crazy stuff to get out the stress, cool. do a dance party, and then then we breathe. And honestly, my Audible app and my podcast app get so much use. This, That's I mean, awesome. the world's knowledge is in my phone. And to use that, and one of the one of the one the other things that I love on there so much is a this sound machine app. So I travel like you. I travel all over the place. I'm in different time zones. I'm in different places. But I know I need my sleep. And they say you get decreased quality of sleep when you're in a different place there's different sounds so i use the same sound white noise at home smart. and on the road so it blocks out all those other sounds it anchors me to my sleep and smart and then i get rest and then the music so i mean i have other tools in the house but honestly my phone and my watch are kind of the epicenter of all these apps that we use to improve our lives so much Incredible. Now I've seen you shut down like 50 different supplements as BS, <laughs> which I love. What are the yeah. ones that make it through the filters? You take any supplementation? Do you use any like essential oils around the house? Do you use, uh, you know, superfoods? <laughs> yeah. I say laughingly. No, and I'm not even against it. So people, because I'm a traditionally trained allopathic MD, people think I'm just blanketly against that. And I'm actually not. I'm dual board certified in regenerative medicine. So I, I believe, I don't believe that 
Western medicine and quote alternative medicine, I don't think it needs to be an either or. I think mm-hmm. it's a both and. But again, in both of those worlds, there's a ton of bullshit. Totally. So, but, so because I have all of these skills and this knowledge, I can look at all the different things and say, okay, that's BS. So yes, there are some supplements that are useful. Honestly, most people could benefit from magnesium. Agreed. Most people could benefit from some type of glutathione support. I use N-acetylcysteine. It's the precursor, so your body has to take it in and break it down because oral glutathione in most cases doesn't work. People in most places in the world need vitamin D. Now, I don't endorse any you know particular specific one for any of those. You need to choose a high-quality, trustable brand because there's not always third-party testing, that kind of stuff. Um, there are a lot of more individualized things that can benefit people you know, lots of things that can help your brain performance and stuff like that. But mega doses of most things are not only not helpful, they are harmful. Like right. vitamin E is a great antioxidant, but actually in high forms and with a certain type of people, it causes cancer. Right. So you're spending all this money for something and it can potentially cause cancer. Now I'm on board with the blue blocking glasses. I think that's a great idea used properly in the evening, but that's not an excuse to have your phone on you until bedtime. Totally. It's not magic. And same thing, none of these supplements are magic beans. The way that for oils and, right, people think, okay, I'm stressed. I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going to dissipate my stress. I'm going to eat like crap, but I'm going to take a magnesium and magically turn into a healthy person. Right. That's not how it works. And even with oils, I I also use what I call an anchor scent. Same thing with traveling. If there's a specific scent you use at night that's calming and helps you relax, when you travel with it, again, you're sending your brain the same signals, same habits, same routines to get to sleep. So that's where it's useful for with any type of thing, you know, I've been uh, ch- chatting about CBD oil even with people. The, the, the key is, are you using it to enhance you or are there are you following some BS claims that it's magically gonna fix you? Right. There's a difference. So mm-hmm. anything that kind of sounds too good to be true is. Right. Because if that one pill worked, we would all be thin and beautiful and live forever, blah, blah, blah. Of course, that's not true. But how can something be used to help you? What are your goals? What is your physiology? What do you need? And that's where I like to cut through the BS and help people find the right thing. Totally. I love that saying. Anything that that sounds too good to be true is, I would say the three exceptions are the ones that we thankfully didn't talk about because we've talked about in 250 episodes, which are sleep, nutrition, and exercise. Those are literally like, literally you magic. can't overstate the, the magic of a good night's sleep. Dr. Hope, I have taken more of your time than I said I would, and I knew I would, and I don't apologize because I've had such a blast with you. Where can people learn more about you, get in touch with you, hear you speak, check out your book, all that stuff? So my website is drhopehealth.com. So D-R-H-O-P-E, health, H-E-A-L-T-H.com. And on there, there you know, there's a course you can find the book. I have free stuff on there. Like some of the tools that I use that are in the book and stuff like that, 12 reasons, how to get to your smarter goals. And so I just give it away. You don't awesome. have to just give me your email. I'm not anything. I just, I, cause I want people to use these tools. I'm con- I'm improving and updating my website, you know, putting more and more of my speaking gigs on there. I have a newsletter, a contact form and a Facebook group, you know, all that stuff because I want, like I said, I don't want people to end up in the ER on the worst day of their life. Right. Well, I'm kind of your biggest fan, except maybe Joe <laughs> Polish, because I don't think he'd be alive if it weren't for you. Um, I love but, care of Joe. He's such I, a great guy. So excited we got to connect and I'm excited that we're going to hang out a whole bunch this weekend. Last question I have for you before I thank you for your very, very valuable time. If people take away one big message from this episode and they carry it with them for the rest of their lives, what would you hope for that one to be? I would just review that stress is a tool. It's how it's not the stress itself. It's how you wield it that either builds you up or breaks you down. Awesome. Dr. Jamie Hope, always a pleasure. As you said, we could talk for hours and hours and hours. So I look forward to doing it again soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the award-winning Superhuman Academy podcast. For more great skills and strategies or for links to any of the resources mentioned in this episode, visit superhuman.blog. While you're at it, please take a moment to share this episode with a friend and leave us a review on iTunes. We'll see you next week. 